So, the, um, the casting. Oh, it was great. I mean, I'm a huge Tilda Swinton fan. And it's ni nice to see Deco that Johnson doing something else than Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. She's pretty good. Yeah, with, with, I, I sort of reserve judgment. Johnson is, is also in the, like I said, in the, the earlier Guadagnino movie. And I haven't really seen her in... I don't remember seeing him in her, her in much else than... I, I was forced to watch Fifty Shades of Grey just offer? recently. Um, maybe coveralls? So you protect your clothes? Could just take all my clothes off. Okay. No clothes. I mean, no coveralls. You... And it is an awful, 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 awful film. Um, uh, really and a good book, so they... <laughs> They really messed, they messed it up. up. They messed it yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, then I saw her in in El Royale, yeah. and I wasn't blown away by her in that either. There's again, there's something something there that I just can't really, I can't put my finger on why why she annoys me a bit. But uh, but I thought that she was okay. In this film, I, I thought I I didn't think that she was she was superb, mm. but I think that she didn't fuck up the rest of the film. Yeah, and I think the role was sort of good. She might not be the most expressive actress, but yeah. the role was that of someone who is basically a blank page. Yes, and and it is a physical yeah. physical role as well. So so kudos yeah. uh, on that. Um, I also like Tilda Swinton a mm. lot. I, I uh, we, we have a we have a mutual acquaintance who who uh, says that Tilda Swinton is the worst actress. She 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 know uh, mm. he knows that he the worst. He, he he thinks that he is she's absolutely awful in anything that uh, she does. Um, but and I can sort of see why people get ticked off by her because she her face is so weird mm. and she's also in a, a kind of way I understand because the criticism was that she always has the same expression and she always looks the same mm. and and her her expression <coughs> is so blank in yeah. a kind of way that you can project anything mm. onto her face which I think is a strength. Yeah. And which I think that that, especially in this, in this movie with her three separate roles, mm -hmm. and and I mean I I got home and I asked, I went to see it with 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 uh, with my significant other, mm. and I asked her at what time did you actually realize that the 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 guy playing the old psychiatrist was. Tilda Swinton. I didn't realize it. Yeah, and she didn't either. Yeah. I I realized it when they had that when when they had that um, scene in the cafe mm. with the with the other young mm. uh, sort of eventually who ends up eventually in a very bad place the, the young dancer. Yeah. Uh, and there I sort of realized because I know Tilda Swinton. Mm. I mean, she started off playing like Orlando, mm. where she played both a man yeah. and a woman. And then she's played these androgynous roles, like in Doctor Strange. Mm. The or originally, the, the, the character was, was a man. Mm. And I think that she was, a, and people said that it was a whitewashed role and so on. And I disagree because I don't think that the, the Supreme One was actually a, a human mm. person. She's he's she's this kind of entity no. and i think that she fit the role perfectly oh, and i'm i'm more and more intrigued by by tilda swing mm. as as years go by i think that she's she makes fantastic choices yeah. and i thought that this was also funny because that the the actor is is named like lutz ebersdorf mm. or something like that and I was after when I saw the movie, I, I thought that's Tilda Swinton. And then I got sort of convinced as the movie went on that mm. that is Tilda Swinton. And then I waited until the final credits and it said Lutz Ebersdorf. And I was like, <laughs> that's not that, that's not a person. <laughs> there's no way there's a guy. First of all, I've never heard of an old German actor called Lutz Ebersdorf. And they'd done it 
in a way that even some of the cast didn't know that okay. she was playing this guy. And they, they made up this guy. Mm. They said that he's actu he, he was actually a psychotherapist who mm. was Austrian, and this was his first film role, and mm. it's probably going to be his last film role. And they just found this guy who mm. seemed to fit the film very well. And then they'd leaked out in the production. Uh, somebody was saying that, 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 no, that it's Tilda Swinton. And they still denied it. They said mm. that absolutely not, that this is, yeah. a, this is. And, and Tilda Swinton went on some kind of award show and read out a statement, li <laughs> I mean, written by Lutz <laughs> Hellerstor, who, 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 who uh, in which he said that, that I'm actually a real person and, and so on and so on. So it was an elaborate ruse to which I sort of respect because, because there's no reason to do that. Uh, eventually, Tilda Swinton said that he, Lutz Ebersdorf played the psychiatrist and she played Lutz Ebersdorf. <laughs> and, and this, I mean, that's, I mean, that's so annoying yeah. in a way. That's, so, that's such pretentious bullshit. But in a way, I sort of really liked that, yeah. that thing. And then, of course, she played Jabba the Hutt as well, so... So, she did. Yeah, oh, she, yeah, she played oh. Jabba the Hutt as well. So, so I, I mean, Jabba. I, I, I really, I really, really liked Tilda Swinton, and and I thought that she was a good fit for for to be a dance teacher as well mm. because she yeah. has this really gaunt and and she looks like. I think she looks like some of the you know the the old dancers who can't dance anymore. Yeah. Who. who who uh, found a school and just make significant efforts in the field of choreography and, no, and is, training. I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, I think I think she was a really really good fit. And um, it's funny because they actually made the dance school thing make sense. Yes, that it's sort of like this. It's spell making basically yes. dancing. So it's yes. kind of cool. Yes, yes. It, I, I thought that was a really yeah. really good because dancing in in primitive religions. Mm. Uh, not so much in our good old Christianity, <laughs> but in primitive religions, like from from originating from Africa or yeah. originating from the Middle East, dancing is such a big part of that sort of trance-like mm, process. Yeah. You got the whirling dervishes, and mm. you have the 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 dances of the the voodoo and and, and stuff like yeah. that. So I, I think ritualistic dance, and it was very very well made. Yeah, you know? I mean, the the fu the final performance mm. was really yeah. a ritual. Mm. Um, and that's one of the things that's, that interests me as well, because I, I have a hard time relating to modern dance in mm. a way. Um, in our town, there's a, there's a school for, for dancers, and a lot of them end up doing modern dance, and we've had a lot of people working in this bar that we're sitting in the, at the moment mm. who were um, studying to be dancers, mm. I mean, way back when. I don't think that there's any now no, but but they no, no. but they used to be so i got sort of introduced to modern dancing which i originally thought when i was a young boy i thought this is this is pretentious bullshit yeah. that this I, I i i didn't get it at all nonsense of the highest order yes yes in in, in <laughs> in every respect, um, but I, I'm sort of intrigued by modern dance because it's so malleable to projects like this. Yeah. I mean, that was a really, really, I think it was a really, really inventive thing. It was. And, and also I liked it in, in contrast to the original movie because although the original movie takes place in a dance school, there's oh, hardly well, well, dancing going <laughs> on. <laughs> any dancing. There's like one scene in which the main character actually can't dance yeah. so so I thought that it was it was a very very interesting sort of expansion again mm. to the original movie yeah. that you actually make sense of what it yeah. is and you make you make it relevant and you tie it sort of ground it mm. in a way to the narrative yeah it was it was a really really good decision um, and it's sort of rare to see movies like this that are, well, it's not really, a, it's, it's, it is a horror movie, but it's not just a horror movie. And it's, uh, it really is, I mean, how many movies that have this sort of same effect do you get in one year? Not, not many. 
and I mean, it was a really, really well-made movie. Yeah. And it's an interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting genre, the horror genre, when you really have people who understand how to play with it. Yeah. And then they know how to create a um, believable world around it, and it, it's really, it's really nice to see something like that. Yeah, it's. The horror thing is also compelling to me because I think neither of the Suspiria movies are really horror movies no. in the way that I understand a generic like horror. Spooky, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's really no jump scares. Mm. I mean, there was half a jump scare in the new one. I think there's half a jump scare in the old mm. one, maybe. Mm. Uh, but in the old one, it, but but they also differ from each other because in the old one, it's it's more of just stylized everything. Yeah. That nothing is really uh, scary because it's so artificial and so over the top. Mm. And in the new one, it's just, there's no jump scares at all, but there's a lot of sort of chilling chilling yeah on. chilling <laughs> imagery yeah. and especially the the end the end is a thing in itself it's yeah. it's it's gore basically yeah. but even during the whole movie there's a couple of things where you go like ooh yeah. and then there's a couple of things where you go like this is this you know th this is suspenseful mm. but i'm not really scared yeah. um so so i can't really if people ask me uh if they're going to go see Suspiria and they're going to ask me, is it a horror movie? I can't really say that it mm. is. I don't know. It may be a psychological thriller or... Yeah. And I don't really know it what to call it. It has body horror element. Yeah, really yeah, yeah Cronenbergian yeah, yeah. kind of stuff. But but there's still, there's not like... It's not like people who uh, generally say that they can't watch horror movies. Mm. It's usually because they can't stand the jump scares. Yeah. And there's none of that no. really. It's basically... A really well-made sort of art movie that yeah. has a horror lot. elements. Yeah. 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 Um, but to be fair, and this is one of the reasons why it's, I think it's worth a rewatch, and why it's, I, I think it's a compelling movie. There is also a lot of stuff in the film that didn't gen necessarily make sense to me. I mean. Uh, for example, in the beginning, there's a lot of shots which focus on different objects. Mm. They're just, they're, there's people in the scene, but the camera is sort of focused on a singular object somewhere. And this, these objects don't seem to have necessarily any kind of significance to the actual narrative. Okay. And then there's a lot of these, these sort of artsy shots from the dreams and from mm. the... From the um, from the flashbacks, you know, there's like a second here and second mm. there of, of just, you know, a hand on a table mm. or, 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 or something blowing in the breeze or mm. something like that, which don't necessarily have, or I couldn't make them to be as sort of, make them to be justified in terms of why this image is included in this narrative. Obviously, art films can do that mm. and obviously there's an Euro there's a european sensibility to the film mm. that there's a there's a feel of just it might be dream like just, yeah, imagery evoking but, something like yeah. that yeah but even dream like imagery if you look at a generic american film even like someone like lynch mm. uh, a lot of the time well not may maybe not lynch but he's pretty far out there but yeah. but if you have a sort of a a nightmarish image mm. in a film there's something usually that sort of there's some kind of element that directly links it to why this person is seeing this dream like yeah. uh, well um have you seen the cell by tarsem singh this this kind of oh, psychological no, no. I, actually, I haven't shit yeah but there's a lot of there's a lot of imagery that yeah. that's basically like a, a, a nightmarish vision yeah. all through and through and a lot of that nightmarish visions are just there. In part, they're there because they're aesthetically mm. really beautiful, but in part, they're there because they somehow uh, disturb us mm. and connect the viewer to the disturbed mind of the seri yeah. serial killer. And in this case, I don't think that there was. I mean, I, 
a lot of the images were just seemed quite random mm. and seemed quite sort of, I mean, they were pleasing to the eye, mm. but they weren't necessarily something that you'd expect to sort of be a building block in this, yeah. this psyche of this mm. girl or, or, or so on. It, it just seemed like confusion. But I don't know if you had that same experience. Mm, um, well, kind of, yeah. I just didn't think about it. Yeah. I was just eating my popcorn and being happy. <laughs> God damn. But when you think about it, I think um, there has to be a logic to it. And probably a logic that has something to do with the fact that the innocent girl is the great mother, what was it, Suspiri? Suspiri. Or, yeah. yeah. Something mm -hmm. like that, maybe. Yeah. That you sort of understand them from the end. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Another thing that I interpreted differently, and maybe there's, there's facts that counter this, but there's in the end when, when, when she declares that she is Mother Superior, mm. they have this cut to her own mother mm. who dies. Mm. Uh, and and uh, some uh, critics said that it is directly that, that, that those two things happen at the same time, mm. that the moment she declares her to herself to be the new mother her real mother dies and I sort of um, yeah I didn't get that uh, yeah and I I actually I sort of got the symbolism mm. but I felt that the image from Ohio was a flashback mm. that it had happened yeah. already uh, earlier on yeah. And uh, that was sort of my take on it. And I don't know, maybe there is some sort of clues in the narrative which suggest that they're happening, happening si simultaneously. Mm. But that felt to me like a flashback. Yeah, because I think she was a young girl when her mother was sick. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so that, that would mean that she'd, be, yeah. she'd been sick all this time, which yeah. is obviously not impossible in, the, in, in, in a narrative like mm. this where everything takes... I mean, the, the witches so, themselves are old as fuck. And yeah. Well, what do you think about the, um, what was the process of this girl becoming Mother Suspiriorum? That's another thing that I think that's left much to the interpretation. Yeah. There wasn't really any reason, apart from having to want to have Dakota Johnson in the role, there's not, there's not really a reason, and, and ov obviously the, the, the link to the original film, but but there's no reason why she should be an American. No. And there's no reason why, why that Mennonite kind of... If you think about reincarnation, she yeah. sort of get reincarnates in this body. Yeah, but why? But why there? And why Mennonites? And why... I mean, there's, there must just be... Just like, fuck you, God. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but, but it's, it's weird. It's, um, I, I like that those things aren't spelled out mm. in the film yeah. but there's also and it's again it's walking a fine line between is this interesting enough for me to think about it or mm. does it just seem far-fetched yeah um so i don't know I, I, mm. I, I don't really have a theory why it was this mennonite girl why why it was this specific mennonite mm. girl who became the next witch and obviously these witches are so powerful that they have sort of influence all over the world mm. and the co coven is really no. really a, a but they a were talking about thing, it in, there was this brief sequence when they were talking about the what was the name of the Jabba Jabba the Hutt what was Marcos it? Marcos yeah they were talking about how that <laughs> what was the real name of Jabba the Hutt <laughs> 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 it's Marcos <laughs> but yeah, yeah um, the Tilda Swinton character was talking with somebody about the fact that um if she was who she claimed to be, the things that happened to them during the war wouldn't have happened. Yeah. So they sort of wore this like a diminished coven yeah. of witches. Yeah. Yeah. Can you trust Jabba nowadays? <laughs> or them witches. <laughs> yeah. Goddamn witches. Yeah.